You should never, ever, ever buy a used car from a used car dealership because it is a total ripoff. And I'm gonna explain exactly why in today's video. Let's go. Over and over and over, people just, the impulse is to just go to the used car dealer to buy a used car. And that is totally the wrong answer. So when someone asks me, I need to buy a used car, what do I do? Here's my answer. The first thing that you have to understand is that dealerships try to make as much money as they possibly can on used cars. The inventory that you see at a used car dealership, even if they sell new cars, probably isn't trade-ins, even though that is what they want you to think. So when somebody comes in and they trade in their car, well, usually that car goes to auction because it probably doesn't fit that dealership's niche or there might be something wrong with it that the dealer just doesn't want to fix. So they auction it off. But that same dealer also has a license to be able to go to those auctions to fill their inventory with the used cars that other dealers are selling. So how comfortable would you be with buying a car sight unseen on a site like eBay? Yeah, that's exactly what these dealers are doing. They're buying these cars that other dealers are putting up on auction, and then they are putting them on their lot to sell to consumers. And that comes with all sorts of risks. I mean, who was the seller? What problems did that car have? Can you trust the dealership in telling you and being transparent with that used car that they probably know nothing about really? And you really have no way to figure out what the previous life for that car really was. So I kind of look at buying a used car at a dealership a lot like buying a used car on an auction site where really the only difference with a used car dealership is you can actually drive the car, but you're not able to really ask too many questions. So you have to be extremely cautious when you're looking at used cars on a dealership. I really see no real difference between an auction site like eBay selling a car and buying a used car at a used dealer because, well, an auction site, you can't actually sue the car where at a dealership you can, but neither are gonna be that honest with you. And yet you'll probably get the runaround from a used car dealer. They'll probably let you know that that car was babied and it was never driven on a rainy day, but you gotta take everything that they say with a grain of salt because remember, they're trying to sell the car. And a lot of time, even if the dealership has the answers to the questions that you asked about the car, it's almost in their best interest not to be honest with you. Now, remember I told you guys it's a huge ripoff to buy a used car from a used car dealer? Well, it comes down to one word and that word is margins. Here's the thing, whether they get the car from a trade-in or they get it from an auction, they buy that car way below book, usually at or below trade-in value. Then they do a couple of things to the car and then they sell that car for retail or close to it. So here's exactly how that works. Oh, and just so you know, everybody, and I mean everybody gets screwed in this whole deal, except for the dealers. Watch this. Oh, by the way, if you haven't answered the ideal cue of the day, have you ever bought a used car from a dealer? Let us know down in the comments, please. I don't even know if this is the right way to do this, but adios. This is roughly how it works. Let's say that you trade in a car for $5,000. It doesn't matter what type of car, but you get the tax incentive if you're in the right state. So you trade in at five, thousand dollars okay and that doesn't fill the niche for that used car dealer so you know what they do well they auction that car off for sixty five hundred dollars okay so now a different dealer that does deal in that niche let's say that it's a mx5 miata right buys that car for sixty five hundred bucks okay so traded in for five that dealership that that then sold it at the auction made $1,500 by auctioning that car off. Now, that next dealer then puts it on and retail the car for 7,500 bucks. So, look at that. You trade the car in for 5K, that dealership then makes 1,500 bucks, then that dealership sells this for 75, but let's say that you negotiate, you get it for 73.50, so, you still, everybody wins except who? You, the person that traded that car in and the end consumer, the person that pays retail for that car that was, I don't know, 2,500 bucks less, you know, a couple of days ago. <sighs> so there you see it. That is how you, as the person trading in the car or buying the car from a used car dealership, 
get screwed. Now, with that, there is overhead. There, there's a bunch of different costs associated with running a, any type of business, this YouTube business. But here's the thing, is that these dealerships normally don't turn over that many cars. Some boutique type dealerships might only turn over two or three cars per month. So they have to make all their money on just those two or three cars that they either get as trade-in or an auction. So if you don't think <laughs> that dealerships, used car dealerships specifically are in it to make money, in it to win it, well, I'm sorry, you're wrong. Now, two of the main reasons why people buy from a used car dealer, one is that they're scared that they might not get financing. And yeah, if you have little or no credit history, it might be a little bit tough, but I still suggest go to a local credit union or a local bank and run the numbers there. See if you can get pre-approved for a loan before you go to a dealer. Usually they're gonna lock you into an extremely high interest rate, which just isn't worth it. I mean, I've seen 10 or more percent APR on that little Honda that you're buying. So <laughs> first and foremost, go to a local bank or credit union and figure out if you can get pre-approved for a loan before you go into a dealership that's gonna make money on your loan. The second thing is that, well, when you're buying a car from a private party, there's no inspection where a lot of these used car dealers will say, hey, we have a 169 point inspection, you know, and so you're, you're totally going to buy a great car from us. Well, you know what that inspection looks like? Well, let me show you. Hey, Tony, does the car have a left tire? Check. Hey, Tony, does the car have a right tire? Hey, hey, Tony, does the car have a steering wheel? As you can see, getting to 169 checks isn't that tough. So here's the thing, if the car looks good, if you're buying it private party, or even if you're buying it from a dealer, I still can't recommend enough that you get a pre-purchase inspection. It'll cost you a hundred or so dollars, but the peace of mind and kind of the free insurance knowing that you're buying a good car is totally worth it. Oh, and here's another thing, warranty. Now you can get third-party warranties all the time, yet a lot of dealerships where they make their money are the add-ons. So they'll, they'll add on a warranty to the purchase price and say, hey, if it goes wrong, we'll fix it. Here's the thing is that those contracts that they, they pay lawyers a lot of money to put together contracts that really don't cover shit. And let me explain. You buy a car, right? And you think it's a great car and two weeks later it starts to develop some rod knock. So you take it back to the dealership and all of a sudden they're going to say, you know what? This car developed the rod knock after you bought this car because when you bought the car, it went through the 169 point inspection and it had an engine. And so that engine now developed rod knock. It's your fault. You are liable. Who's going to foot the bill for that? Well, Probably you, because like I said, those lawyers know how to craft a contract, a warranty that, well, just isn't gonna get fulfilled. And if you're buying a relatively new used car and there's a warranty, well, this is where the dealerships actually get ahead because they're selling you that warranty and maybe one out of every 50 or so cars actually has an issue, but they're actually playing the long game that, well, a lot of the cars aren't gonna have the issue. So you're just gonna be spending that 1800 bucks, 3000 bucks, whatever that warranty is and not end up using it. In fact, over half of people that buy a used car warranty never use it. Now, I had a friend recently that was looking at a car and she was telling me that she just wanted to go to a used car dealership because all of the cars are in one place so it makes it super easy to shop. Well, yeah, she was right, but you don't buy one from a used car dealership. You go and look, you test them, but you don't drive them home. Well, you shouldn't at least. Also, you're probably getting some advice from some different people if you're looking for a used car. They're probably saying, hey, Joe Schmo's dealership down the road took really good care of me. Well, the reason that they took really good care of your friend is because, well, they probably ripped them off and your friend just doesn't have the skills to understand. Well, or maybe they do, but if they don't, then choose new friends. But literally, they probably paid close to retail for that Miata when they could have bought one for private party for a little bit more than trade-in. So. Yeah, they took really good care of you and they gave you the white glove treatment because you overpaid for that vehicle. And what's even worse than having a friend tell you that they have a dealership that they recommend is a family member. And of course, your uncle, your aunt, your parents, somebody is gonna tell you, hey, I worked with this dealer, they were amazing. Well, guess what? Again, that dealer that they've probably been going to for the last 20 years has been taking really good care of them because it's like clockwork. Every two years, they go in, they get a new car, they're happy, but they aren't worried about the price that they're paying. 
And that's the thing is that you can buy anything at some price, but is it the ideal price? And that is the thing that we cover in the ideal car strategies among a lot of other things. So if you're looking to buy a new car, you might want to go check that out or new, new used car. But either way, the ideal car strategies is just going to give you a free primer on how to navigate the buying process. Oh, and the last thing is that a lot of people are just kind of weird about meeting other people from the internet and buying such a large purchase in public, which again, makes a lot of sense. And I've bought and sold a lot of cars on Craigslist and kind of my go-to now is actually Facebook Marketplace. I think it's really cool because then you can actually see who you're dealing with. But if you do all of the things, including, you know, get a good friend or family member to go with you to go look at the car, meet in a lit place, banks are good, grocery parking lots are really good because well, there's a lot of people around in case something does happen. The other thing is never, ever bring cash. Maybe bring a couple hundred bucks to have them hold the car if you know what you're doing, but otherwise do not bring cash because, well, how often do you walk around with thousands of dollars of cash on you? Rarely, if ever. So that's the thing is it's gonna make you uncomfortable and if someone is selling a car and says bring cash, don't go. Now, a lot of times that you go look at a used car to used car dealer, they're going to ask if you're going to be trading in your car. Now, a lot of people that haven't watched this video or understand how used car dealerships work, they end up telling them, yes, I'm going to trade the car in. That car salesman is going to give that person an offer on that car. Well, if they haven't watched this video, please text that person or if it's you, please understand how that math works. It's very simple. They're gonna offer you a low number for the trade-in, obviously. They're then gonna auction it off or just jump this step and go from 5K to 7,500 bucks if it fits their niche and make 2,500 bucks off of you literally doing, well, nothing. So pretty much this is just adulting. This is straight up like you gotta understand the math and what dealerships are there to do, which is make money on you, especially your used car. So make sure that, well, you don't fall into that trap. And more often than not, what I hear from people all the time is that buying a used car from a used car dealer is just, it's convenient. And yes, we like convenient. I mean, hey, Alexa, order me some toilet paper. I mean, that's convenient. But ultimately, if you like getting pushed around from a pushy salesperson and having them just go through all the steps and make it really convenient, for you to buy that overpriced cart, well then by all means go for it. But literally everything I covered in this video is to show you that, well, making it really easy to get a loan through the dealership and look at that pre-purchase inspection that they do a bunch of check boxes. Well, that trust that these dealerships have, it's all a facade. It literally is a machine, a well-oiled machine to get you to buy a car. So buy private party, they're not gonna push you around. Usually they're not very good salespeople. They just have a people problem and they want to sell a car because maybe they outgrew it or they're moving or whatever the case is. I always recommend finding out why that person is selling the car. And that's the number one reason why you don't buy a used car from a used car dealer. It's because you can't figure out why that car was for sale. A lot of times, a lot of people that I know have gotten screwed over buying a used car that actually wasn't everything that it was cracked up to be. And then they're the one foot in the bills on the repairs. So buy a used car from a private party and get a pre-purchase inspection. I promise you it will always, always be better than buying it from a dealer. Now, if you wanna see five used sports cars that you can buy for under 10K, go check out this video over here or check out what YouTube recommends you watch next. Oh, and if you haven't yet, please subscribe. But either way, you can't lose and as always, keep living that ideal lifestyle.